Alright guys, welcome back to another video. It's Dolby here coming at you with some Toyota content today. So I just want to preface this video by saying that this is going to be a new series on my channel. The Toyota is very much a huge part of this channel and is going to continue to be a huge part of this channel. I have a lot of things I want to do to this vehicle that are still to come and as I get the money for it, I'm going to be doing it. So I thought it would be cool to just show the whole process and get some content out of it and maybe teach a few things along the way. So from oil changes to you know light conversions inside to roof racks to solar panels, we're gonna do it all. So stay tuned for that. And don't worry, we're still gonna be doing our outdoorsy content. So that's not gonna go away. And we're just gonna have additional Toyota content for those who want it. I know it might not be for everyone, but I think it's pretty cool. And like I said, the Toyota is a big part of the channel to be able to see, you know, it go from just a little version of Toyota to this big beefy overland monster. I think it'd be pretty cool. With that being said, uh, let's get on with the video and I'll show you what tools you guys are gonna need for the job. And all you're gonna need for this tools wise is a little flathead screwdriver for getting the spark plug wires off, spark plug socket tool. If you don't have one of these tools and you just have the socket, then you're going to need an extension for sure, maybe even two. And you're going to need your 3 8 drive ratchet and a 10 millimeter socket. Now you don't need to have an impact, but if you do, I recommend using it. It just makes some things a lot easier. And that's it. That's all you're going to need for today's video. And of course, you're going to need your air filter. I got the Denso OEM. And then you're gonna need your wire set. I got these NGK ones, and I got the NGK OEM spark plugs as well. And as always, I'll leave a link in the description to where I got all these parts and all the part numbers. We gotta get the air box taken off so we can get access to the spark plugs. So I'll show you guys how we do that. So we're gonna wanna take this air box right off because our three spark plugs on this side are covered by this. So all it is is a couple vacuum lines. So there's this vacuum line right here, I'm just gonna take off. There's a 10 millimeter clamp here connecting to the throttle body. So we're gonna wanna take that off as well. I have my DeWalt impact. You can just use a ra standard ratchet. So now we got that loosened off. And actually if you come around to the front of the engine bay, there's another vacuum line here. You can just pull off that nipple right there. Then you come around to the MAF, there's another 10 millimeter hose clamp here, so we're just gonna impact that off. And we got that loose. Oh, don't, don't do that. Lose your socket that way. Yeah. See that? So these clips, they got, it's almost like perfectly set up for someone. It's got a little insert almost, perfectly sized for a flathead to go in. So you just push into it and then pull up and these clips come right out. And then there's actually another one over here. So I'm gonna get this one out as well. Okay, that one's out. I think we can take this right out now. There we go. Look at that. Now we got access to all three plugs. All right, what you need to do first if you're replacing all your spark plugs, you just need to disconnect all your coil packs. And you just got a little clip on the side here that you just push in. It's on the right side of it. And then you just pull it back. So I got this one off. I kind of broke it, but you got to pry up on this. So you got to get underneath it somehow and actually just pull back on this and release the tension and as you release the tension on this you pull up kind of want to get under it oh and there I go I broke it all right got two off okay we got all three off all right now if you were just changing the spark plugs and you weren't changing the wires you wouldn't do what I just did. You would take them off very carefully. You would actually try to get a tool that you could pry up from underneath, like a pick tool almost. So now what we're gonna do is we got our 10 millimeter and we're just gonna take these coil packs off. And then the spark plug will be underneath those. Don't lose your hardware guys. Put it somewhere where you're not gonna lose it. Take your ignition coil out guys and once again don't just leave stuff on you know on here or on here put it on a table somewhere 
where it's all going to be there when you need it. All right, now this is where your spark plug socket tool is going to come in handy. So I just got this one off Amazon. It's magnetic and it's got a swivel and I think it's got some rubber in there as well to hold the spark plug in place. So I would highly recommend getting one of these. I can link the one I got on Amazon in the description below. What you're going to want to do is get it in there so you can feel it locked in. Then with your off hand, you're going to want to hold the wrench in the center so it's not swaying side to side. Hold it in the center and just break that loose. And then just continue all the way until it's all the way out. You should be able to do it with your hand all the rest of the way here. Now, once you feel it break loose, pull up. And voila, there is your spark plug. As you guys can see, it was definitely time for a replacement. And another thing, these come pre-gap from Toyota. It should be 0.44. As you can see, they're a double electrode spark plug. These have to be the exact same length on each side, so I'm gonna continue with the installation. Put our plug in our handy dandy spark plug tool. And let's guide this down. And we're just going to hand tighten this to start off because we do not want to strip this. You should be able to feel with your hand if it's going in properly until it starts to get too hard to do with our hand. All right, so now we got it hand tight. We want to put our ratchet back on. Once it's hand tight all the way, it's seated. Then we just want to half turn to two thirds of a turn. But always do less. Don't, have, don't do the maximum. So we're just going to do a half turn. That's about a quarter turn there. And just go another little quarter. And to me, that's good enough. Pull that out. Slide the coil back in. Put this bad boy back in. You can connect the coil pack again. Once you hear it click, that's how you know you're good. So then just straighten it out and... So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to follow this wire all the way back to the other side and we're going to change this one first. So I'll show you guys how we do that. So as you can see here, this is the coil pack we just changed and this is the old wire. We're going to be replacing the wire but we want to follow it back. So we figure out, okay, it's the middle wire. So we come to here. Middle wire, middle wire, middle wire, middle wire. And that brings us to this first spark plug on this side. So I got this wire all popped out of these things. You just pull up on it. Be careful you put a hand down on this while you're pulling it up because you don't want to rip this off. So I got this all popped out. So what you're going to want to do now is grab a hold of this here and just twist and pull up. And like that, it just comes out just like so and then we got to get our spark plug wrench down in there all right so let's try and get this down here okay we got that on there so just hold our wrench in the center boom broke it loose now we're just gonna ratchet it off we'll probably get it with our hand yep got it with our hand here and just hand loosen it you can use the ratchet if you want, but to me it's just more efficient to use your hand. And I think we got it. Voila. This one's not as bad, but that's okay. We're going to replace them anyway. Alright, same thing as the other side. Get it in there. Feel it seat properly. Get it in the center. And then just with your hand, tight hand tighten it. All right, so we got that in all the way right now. This is a pretty awkward angle. So the start point is gonna be about right here. So we're only gonna go a half turn. So I'd say there. And that's, to me, that's all you need right there. So now we're gonna replace the wires. We got these new wires here. And as you can see, they are labeled cylinder one, cylinder five, and cylinder three. So I will pop up a diagram on the screen right now of all the cylinder heads and which ones they are, just so you guys know. But anytime you get aftermarket wires like this, they should always be labeled. So go off that 
and just refer to the diagram I post on the screen. I'll drop it in the description as well so you guys don't mess it up. All right, so just like we took it out, we're gonna fit this NGK wire back where the other one came from. Twist, push down, just like so. And then uh, let's just run this wire back where it came from. Put it up through here. Tuck it in. Like so. So now we just plug this guy back where he came from. The clip, just like the way we took it off, you'll see how it clips back on. It doesn't always make a, a clicking noise, but if it's not coming off, you know it's on, right? So yeah, guys, I'm not gonna show me changing every single one because it's just the same process for each one. So I'm gonna quickly change these up and then I'm gonna show you guys how I change my air filter, which should be pretty self-explanatory, but if it's not, we'll show you anyway. All right, so as you can see, we got all our nice new NGK wires. All our coil packs are bolted down. Don't forget to do that. And don't forget to connect them. They'll all clip in, You'll sh you should be able to hear it. We got all our wires routed all the way through. Same with these. These you'll know. These will click in. So make sure these are clicked in and they're facing the right way. Now all that's left to do is we got to put our air box back on. So let's do that real quick. All right, make sure you got this going in the right way. It only goes one way. Uh, sink this under here. Sink this tube up here. Just kind of. Get this on maybe first, just like that. Maybe get that on first, okay. We got the math on. Sometimes these things need a little jerk and to get, get going, they can be a little stubborn. Okay. You see there's this little lip here? Make sure you pull that right up into there and then tighten the clamp on it. All right, so if we're looking at the vehicle head on, we got this back on here. Remember, there's this vacuum line we want to connect back to here. Push that all the way on. This vacuum line here, this sits in here. So remember to push that back on. This hose here for our MAF sensor. Remember, this clips back into here. This one clips into, into there. All right, guys, it's the next day. I was just editing this video, and I realized I forgot to tell you guys to hook up this vacuum line here. So remember, in this box here, to hook it up back to this nipple. All right, guys. Don't forget to tighten up these clamps, okay? Not too tight, just tight enough. Make sure it's tight, give it a little pull. Everything's good. All right, last but not least, we're going to replace the air filter on our Toyota 4Runner. This is probably the easiest maintenance mod you can do to a 4Runner, it's so easy. You literally just pop these clips up right here. You take out your old dirty air filter. It just slides up like that. As you can see, it's not horrible. I mean, it's brown and I have vacuumed this out already a couple times. It's past its prime for sure. And these are cheap. I'd like to replace these every 20, 25,000 kilometers. It totally depends on where you drive, if you gra drive more gravel and you're off-roading more, you're probably going to have to replace this more often. If you're more of a city driver, all you do is commute to work from back, it'll probably last you a lot longer. But it's good to just check these every time you're doing maintenance on your vehicle. And, you know, this, I think they're 20 bucks. So 20 bucks is 20 bucks. Also, guys, make sure you take a look inside and clean out anything that might be in there. As you can see, there's quite a bit of dirt, pine needles, etc. So I'm going to get the vacuum and clean that stuff out. All right, got it all vacuumed out. Now let's get the new air filter in there. Here's a little side-by-side -side comparison for you guys. As you can see, it's time for a new filter. All right, guys, so you see how it's kind of like pointed out this way? The white ridges are pointing out this way, and the back is kind of just like a, a grill. So you want to have this facing in. So this is just going to go in. You just slide it down, and you'll see it just boop, pops in just like so. And then you just pop this back down, put these up, and boom, you got a brand new air filter. 
All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if this video helped you out in any kind of way, please hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And if you want more 400 tips and just want to stick around, build, or you want to check out some of my other videos where we do fishing, camping, hiking, you name it, outdoors, we're doing it. Hit that subscribe button. Maybe stick around a little. Hit that bell. Turn on post notifications so you get notified when I upload. I want to thank you guys for watching. And as always, peace out and take care.